First Sergeant Cap here with Company D, Second United States Sharpshooters. And today I want to talk to you about another very important skill to have, how to clean your leather. Now, uh, we get a lot of questions about this, whether you have high-end reproduction uh, booties uh, like these, or uh, maybe you just have mainstream Settler Row stuff. Um, cleaning and oiling and caring for your leather is gonna make sure you get the most money and longest return out of your investment. And even with inexpensive stuff that typically doesn't last very long, with the proper care, you can have a more comfortable fit as well as um, longer life and a happier term of service with your booties, for example. Um, one of the most important things to know how to do when it comes to leather is how to clean leather. Um, it could be kind of tricky, but all you need is something like saddle soap. And uh, other companies make similar products and I use this when my brogans or booties are essentially too, too dirty to just brush off. You don't have to do this all the time, but um, you know, once or twice a year, or if you, if you spend a really muddy weekend um, and your leather is just hammered, or maybe you, you're pulling these out of the closet for the first time or out from underneath your bed and you have a little bit of mildew on your leather. Um, when it comes to mildew, the, the most important thing to do is make sure that your leather stays dry. And if you do store it in your house, like in a closet uh, or underneath your bed or maybe in a garage, is to check it throughout, uh, throughout its uh, term of storage to make sure that it's not get, getting mildewy or if it is that you catch it soon enough where it just takes a little bit of brushing and some light cleaning and it stays nice and healthy. So <clears throat> when it comes to saddle soap, you know, be, be sure to read all the instructions. It's not for uh, suede, for example. And as with using any product, use common sense and uh, make sure that you test the soap uh, on like a unnoticeable or less noticeable spot of your piece that you intend uh, to clean to make sure that you don't um, damage or otherwise discolor your leather. I know for a fact that saddle soap works great with my booties, so I'm going to use it as normal. You'll need a uh, clean horsehair brush for removing the initial uh, dirt and dust from your leather, as well as um, kind of buffing out and rubbing in your oil and we use in company D Obanoffs, so either the the liquid oil or the uh, heavy duty LP, which is more like a, a wax. Um, kind of personal preference. I like I like the the wax a lot. And if you need to get in along sort of the the welt of your shoe, uh, a nice toothbrush can be really uh, handy. Uh, maybe a, a, a scrap of wood. Uh, or some other item in case you have any caked on uh, dirt or mud left on the sole of your shoe. And then for mixing up your saddle soap, uh, one of these small boot brushes is really handy. Uh, I got this one at Boot Barn, it was $3. You can buy packs of these on Amazon. So if you need to like kit out a company, for example, or if you do uh, full company uh, clean your gear day sort of thing at events. Uh, a bunch of these could be really handy. So first thing we got to do is we need to remove our laces. And if you ever um, get confused on how to redo the, the right lacing pattern, just take a picture of your shoe uh, before you uh, unlace them. Then you got to remove all the surface dirt and that'll help prep get up under around the tongue and you'll see like we talked about in our previous video I have my shoe tree in my shoe to help maintain the form and um, it helps control the the humidity uh, inside the booty they're absolutely uh, it's a great investment to have if you want to get the most life 
and maintain the best shape and form of your booty. So now that we have the initial dust taken off, I just have a little tuna can of water and my saddle soap. Now, this isn't gonna be like, you know, sudsing up uh, like you're doing the dishes. Um, you need it to suds and you don't need, you don't need your boot to get sopping wet. You just need enough um, soap and moisture to get suds and to activate the soap. This isn't like normal soap. They're, they're typically like natural oils inside um, the soap uh, to help uh, nourish the leather as you clean it. So now I have my brush charged and you just brush it in. I always try to hit a few places in case, you know, I accidentally put too much water on my brush. Then uh, I can evenly distribute it. And you can see, if you look at the, the clean soap and how brown the soap's already getting. And this is also a little bit different from normal soaps in that you let it dry and the soap will actually bond to your surface contaminants and the soap will dry. And when the soap dries is when you are ready to wipe off. So now my brush is out of soap. Take my damp brush, make some more suds. Let's see, put it up here. Yeah, always, always make sure before you do something like this that you make sure that um, you're not going to alter the appearance or performance of your leather in any way that you you don't want. So always make sure you check on a less noticeable place first. Then you just scrub this out. You can always, if you have too much on one side, you can bring it back around. And you'd be amazed at how much just saddle soap um, can recover and rejuvenate, you know, something that you thought was probably just fit for the trash. And this will look great um, even before you oil it. So, you know, you just, Last little bit, I want to get inside the tongue. A little bit more. There we go. That's a bit much. So anytime you leave dirt and debris in a position to abrade or wear on leather, it's going to shorten its lifespan. Um, and you can also get your soul. Don't forget, uh, Civil War booties have leather soles. They need to be loved and cared for too. Uh, some shoe product companies even make uh, essentially a, a special uh, leather protectant and preserver for uh, soles. And my welt was looking pretty good, but just for the sake of being thorough, I'll get in here. And once you have clean leather, then your oil can absorb. It's just like you wouldn't paint something that was covered uh, in grease or dirt. By um, removing the surface debris, you, you help open up the pores, remove any surface contaminants or environmental contaminants. And then that way when you oil, you, you actually get the, the penetration and preservation that you're looking for. So if you just use a little bit, this stuff will sometimes dry in just a matter of minutes. This one's almost dry. So we'll go ahead and wait till this dries thoroughly and then we'll start wiping it off. Now that our saddle soap is all nice and dry, uh, you can take a, a towel or a paper towel and kind of give it an initial buff to get all those bonded and contaminants off the leather. So you can see we got 
I got some nasty off and out of the leather. So now is the time if you if you need to blacken your booties, uh, then now's the time to do it before we oil. Uh, I only blacken maybe once a year, and we use uh, a cream blackener. It has uh, natural oils with uh, dyes in it. Uh, stay away from the Kiwi products, but if you're going to uh, blacken, now's the time to do it. Uh, my leather's still just fine, so I'm going to take my Obanoff's Heavy Duty LP, and then I apply it with my hands so that the heat and friction from my hands uh, help break down the wax and get it even deeper into the the leather. Make sure I get the sole too. I know it may look like I'm putting a lot on. Um, because I have a lot of light on it. But just remember, um, whenever you're oiling leather, use uh, as little product as you can. Uh, a little dab will do you. You don't want, you never want your leather wringing wet from anything. The other nice thing about having shoe trees in here while you're doing it is as the leather softens and gets nourished, all the wrinkles are going to relax to the form. Um, the shoe tree is going to maintain, um, help maintain the, the, the moisture, the level inside the, inside the booty. And anytime you can ease out those wrinkles, it means you're going to have more longevity out of your booty. So, um, Now's a good time if you need to clean or oil your laces, you can do those too. Uh, especially you get those ones from the Sutlers, those things can be just hard as a rock, difficult to tie, so you can oil your, oil your laces too. Set that aside. So now we have our booty oiled, take our clean brush, and we just buff the oil into the leather. A little bit more. For a nicer appearance and your finishing stroke, pay attention to the, the grain of the leather so it lays, lays in a handsome fashion. Make sure you don't leave any uh, oil or soap build up in the eyelets. <clears throat> there we have a nice clean and oiled booty. Now we just got to put the laces back on. The Civil War method for lacing your your booties can seem a little strange. It's not it's not like the way we lace our boots and shoes today. I think it's called like the Oxford style of lacing. Actually, let me go this way. What you're looking for are those three cross laces in the front 
And again, with the shoe tree, I lace up my and tie my, my booties, help maintain their shape and form even more while they go back into my closet, ready to go for their next event. So we hope this video uh, has been helpful for you. Um, if you think uh, your other friends in the hobby could benefit from this information, please share up this video. Uh, if you have other uh, leather cleaning tips or preferred products, uh, feel free to share them uh, and your wisdom down in the comments below. Thanks as always for liking and subscribing, and we'll see you next time.